Gentlemen, okay, as we, as we uh, finish up here, final thoughts. Uh, Alex, your final thoughts on what we chatted about today and where the market's going and what should we be sensitive to? Uh, you know, I, I think being the leaders on this field, uh, let's just don't forget how important is also prevention. Uh, we're talking about access, but let's just not forget that governments and, uh, and uh, um, research needs also to be uh, targeted to prevention, prevention of diabetes, hypertension, and the complications of this disease that is uh, dialysis. Uh, I, I will agree that uh, any technology that uh, can provide better veins uh, is very, very welcome, and it will definitely improve the results of uh, access and eventually home dialysis or central dialysis. So I congratulate Tej and, and the work uh, that he's doing uh, on this domain. Nick, your comments on the closing out thoughts and other areas we yeah, should have touched on. Some some great points there, and um, I think I'd like to reiterate some of those points about so fistulas only is good as it being used and being cannulated successfully by the person who's cannulating it. And that's where this, you know, having great access is needed for home hemodialysis. Um, I think home hemodialysis really is something we should be pushing for. We have quite a lot in the UK and patients really benefit from that and can maintain quality of life, um, employment and reduce hospital stays. And back to the things that Tej was saying, I think getting in there early and actually engaging the patient, not just educating the patient, but the patient becomes responsible for their own care, I think is a really important point. And that starts with things like fist assist, vein preparation, education, and also the education about how a machine works at home and making it simple at home. And I think that's where Osman comes in, in terms of more easy to use. We, we always thought dialysis machines were heading in the direction of kind of more sophisticated Mercedes rather than a more usable Land Rover. And I think, um, you know, people want a Jeep. They don't want that works, works for them and is reliable. They don't want something that's fancy and got leather seats. And I think that's where I hand over to Osman in terms of where home, home hemodialysis utility comes in. And Osman, that's a quick handoff to you. Your thoughts, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're in a really interesting perspective. Your closing yeah, thoughts. I think, yeah, I think um, lots of good Lots of good conversation here. I, I, I do think that um, to fix this, and to me, the solution, Joe, is not necessarily home hemo, but more dialysis um, being done um, outside of the traditional in-center space. So, so that could be self-care, assisted dialysis, home hemo, PD. There's lots of ways it should go, but I think more patients coming out of the center. What I find exciting is that you know, the renal care in the United States moving out of a volume-based system and to a value-based system. And I think the patient being central to that means that this is a win-win for everyone. And I, and I think as long as we stay on that path and kudos to all the payers pushing us in this direction, shame it took so long, but um, it, it's a great direction moving. And I think the winners in all of this really ultimately will be the patient. So, so that's fantastic. Great. Tej? Yeah, I know. Uh, Joe, it's been a great session. And uh, I think that you've got the expertise here that I really, I have learned a lot. But I think that at the end of the day, you know, we all take care of patients. And I'm excited for nephrology. I'm excited for vascular care. Because I think with better nephrology opportunities for dialysis, more education happening to the surgical community, the interventional community, uh, the focus on nephrology care, the growing need that this patient base is going to happen. I live in a healthy part of America in Silicon Valley. The amount of patients that I'm seeing that are in their 80s and 90s now with late renal failure, and they have supportive family structures at home. And you can just see that now that they're 85, 86, um, the years of high blood pressure, diabetes, other medical conditions have led to renal failure. So I think having systems in place and what's exciting about dialysis is the teamwork that's involved. You've got the patient, you've got the family, you've got the nephrologist, you've got your surgeon, you've got your technicians, you've got your innovations, you've got your entrepreneurs, and you've got a model of value-based care all happening in front. I don't know of any, and then of course you've alluded to it already, you've got the nurses, the technicians, the home therapy. This is a big beast of an opportunity. And I think uh, having the expert providers having the education and having entrepreneurial techniques and, and, and new ways to do things is only going to help everybody globally. And I think what's being shared in America today, 
can be applied to India, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Asia. Uh, I think all of this is going to help the patient. So this has been a fabulous session as we prime the pump literally for where I think nephrology will be and vascular access and dialysis will be going in the near future. And it'll be coming up very soon on us. So I agree and I thank everybody for their education and time today. John, John Ross, you want to take us out with uh, your expert POV, point of view. I think the point of view is simply going to be straightforward. We know exactly what needs to be done. And, uh, and I think Ted said it well. We have so many different players in here. We have, this is such a magnificent opportunity. But, you know, a lot of people can have great ideas. It's always the implementation of the idea. It's always the implementation. So we've got multiple players that we're, we're gonna to have to get it implemented. Everything from starting backwards with the patient to the machine and all the way back again to the access. And all these things have to line up very, very well. If we can line this thing up and jumpstart this over the next, I'm just making up numbers, two years, it will all of a sudden go on autopilot where now the standard of care has changed and the whole conversation is aligned toward home dialysis rather than being an outlier, it is the inlier. Well, gentlemen, this has been a fantastic session. Uh, we were approaching this subject from a many different purviews. We all know that rewards drive behavior. And so with that, all the supporting teams around this are driving towards uh, both better health to the patient, better access, and better outcomes. So I do appreciate everybody's time on this and a very important subject. Much thanks to our panel again, and especially our host, Scott Pantel and LSI. Keep in mind, LSI has got our conference coming up for 2022 at Dana Point in California. The Emerging MedTech Summit, Monarch Beach Resort, the Waldorf Astoria. Partner on the Pacific with the leaders building MedTech. Don't miss it. It's one of the best of the year. I'm Joe Mullings from 160 Studios. Be well.